who are a few of the most despicable criminals around? Let's find out. Starting with number six, never existed. Suzanne Hardman was lonely and vulnerable after a recent divorce, so she turned to Match.com in search of companionship. But she didn't know that the path she was on looking for love was a path that would lead to deception and financial ruin. Enter James Richards, a charming and seemingly genuine man who captured Suzanne's heart with his flattering messages and promises of love. Despite the over-the-top declarations of affection, Suzanne, like many others in her position, found herself drawn in by James's apparent sincerity. She was flattered by his attention and believed she had finally found someone who really cared for her. However, what Suzanne didn't realize was that James was nothing more than a fictional character created by a group of Nigerian scammers. Operating from a house in Hampshire in the UK and using Match.com as a front, these scammers took advantage of vulnerable women like Suzanne, exploiting their desire for love for financial gain. As Suzanne's relationship with James blossomed, so too did his requests for money, claiming various emergencies and financial hardships because these guys always have some sort of hardship. James convinced Suzanne to transfer loads of money to him and his supposed lawyer, Rod Thompson. In just one month, Suzanne handed over a staggering 174,000 pounds of her life savings, completely unaware that she was being duped. The elaborate scam unraveled when Suzanne confided in a colleague who urged her to verify the legitimacy of the transactions. When Suzanne realized it was all a scam, her world came crashing down. Thankfully, justice was served when the perpetrators of the scam were brought to trial and convicted of fraud and money laundering, but the damage had been done. Suzanne was left devastated, not only by the loss of her life savings, but also by the betrayal of trust and the emotional toll of being deceived. Suzanne remains determined to move forward and rebuild her life after the devastating ordeal. Armed with newfound knowledge and a healthy dose of skepticism, she continues to navigate the world of online dating with caution, determined not to fall victim to deception again. If you follow this channel, you know that scams like this are rampant. We report on them all the time. So it's a good time to remember that you need to check on your single older loved ones who may not be as aware of these scams. It's it's almost always someone close to the victim that ends up blowing the whole thing wide open. Number five, bittersweet. A Colombian social media influencer, Milton Dominguez, known as J. Tomy, faced backlash and potential criminal charges after posting a tasteless prank video online. In the video, Dominguez can be seen tricking elderly and homeless men into eating bars of soap covered in chocolate, presenting them as chocolate ice cream bars. The prank, which took place on the streets of Cardenia, Colombia, pretty much outraged everyone who saw it. The video shows Dominguez buying soap bars and melting chocolate to cover them with. He then approaches unsuspecting individuals, presenting the soap as a delicious treat. The victims, unaware of the trick, take several bites before realizing they've been tricked into eating soap. Their reactions range from confusion to anger as they discover the truth. One of the guys who participated in the prank turned himself in to the authorities and was fined $324 for his involvement. Dominguez, meanwhile, faced public backlash and criticism for his actions. Many condemned the prank as cruel and insensitive, particularly given the vulnerability of the victims targeted. And in response to the backlash, Dominguez issued a public apology on his Instagram account, expressing regret for his actions and acknowledging the harm caused. He admitted that the prank had crossed the line and urged other influencers to reflect on the impact of their content. The incident sparked a broader conversation about the ethical responsibilities of social media influencers and the potential consequences of their actions. Many called for greater accountability and scrutiny of online content, particularly when it involves vulnerable or marginalized communities. Authorities in Cartagena indicated that Dominguez and his accomplices could face criminal charges for or their involvement in the prank. The prank, as far as these pranks go, is pretty harmless, but extremely mean-spirited. Pranks are only fun when everyone is laughing in the end. 
Number four, heroes to zeros. In New York City, the housing authority, known as NYCHA, was caught up in a bribery scandal that involved 70 current and former employees. The scheme, a classic pay-for-play corruption, saw housing authority workers pocketing a staggering $2 million in bribes over a decade to secure lucrative work contracts for themselves and others. Among those charged were individuals who were once hailed as heroes within the NYCHA community. Dwarka Rupnarain, a former superintendent, stood out for allegedly collecting over $80,000 in bribes while overseeing Bronx housing projects. His social media profiles show off a life of luxury with pictures of his extravagant vacations and a taste for high-end European cars. Rigoberto Cherries, another implicated individual, was selected to participate in NYCHA's Coaching and Mentorship Leadership Academy designed to enhance leadership skills. Despite this recognition, Cherries is accused of pocketing at least $70,000 in bribes from contracts across Brooklyn and Queens. Naimia Branch, lauded as a hero by NYCHA Administrator Eva Trimble, 2020, also faced charges. Despite being praised for his dedication to his job, Branch allegedly accepted bribes totaling around $3,000 while working as a superintendent in Brooklyn. Similarly, Alex Tolazano, a Bronx superintendent, allegedly received over $41,000 in bribes. Tolozano's reputation at NYCHA was tarnished in 2022 when he was suspended for appearing undressed in bed with a woman during a work-related video conference call. Which, like, it's weird that he wasn't just outright fired, right? Elizabeth Tapia, another implicated superintendent, faced accusations of accepting $11,000 in bribes and took advantage of her position by favoring her domestic partner in work assignments. Another employee, Henry McFadder, was suspended for charging a subordinate to review a resume using his work computer, which is a big fat who cares sandwich. But then he is also alleged to have taken $15,000 in bribes. Meanwhile, Juan Mercado, who raked in a whopping $314,300 in bribes, was employed as a superintendent across multiple NYCHA projects. The crazy thing about this story isn't that these people were taking bribes, but that the charges brought by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York were the largest number of federal bribery indictments in a single day in Department of Justice history. You'd think it'd be like some mafia guys or something, but no, it's this insanely corrupt housing authority. Number three, blame it on takeout. Amanda Farr, a woman from the UK, was sentenced to 18 months in prison for committing fraud by stealing 24,000 pounds from her poor 91-year-old grandmother, Joyce Hutchings. Farr set up a scam to divert her grandmother's savings into her own account over two years. She made a total of 130 transactions, splurging the money on fast food from Just Eat and McDonald's, purchases from iTunes and the PlayStation Store, bets on an online sportsbook, and even funding a vacation to Amsterdam. Her grandmother, on the other hand, was left in a horrible financial situation, owing money to utility companies and debt collection agencies. During her trial at Canterbury Crown Court, Farr attempted to deflect blame by accusing her grandmother of being a big spender, particularly on Asian food. Because, like, you know how much you spend at Panda Express, so it makes sense that Hutchings' money was all gone. Panda Express is pretty pricey. Anyway, Farr also claimed that she had a legit financial arrangement that was aimed at benefiting the entire family. However, jurors saw through her lies and unanimously convicted her of fraud. Confiscation proceedings at the same court determined that Farr's actual financial benefit from the scam amounted to £13,900, while her available assets were a mere £84. As a result, the judge ordered her to repay the paltry sum within 28 days, warning that failure to comply would result in an additional seven days of imprisonment. Farr's callous exploitation of her vulnerable grandmother was characterized as calculated and devoid of empathy. Despite the limited confiscation order, the court made it clear that offenders could still be pursued for further funds if they were found to possess additional assets in the future. And yes, we know that indulging in Asian food probably doesn't mean take out Chinese, but still, she's going to say her grandmother's financial problems were from too many dinners, and she really thought that excuse would fly? Number two, the Medi-Scam. 
Erin Foley and her twin brother, Ted Albin, allegedly swindled $25 million in Medicare funds. The duo orchestrated the scheme through their healthcare billing company, Grapevine Professional Services, Inc., over a four-year period until 2021. The indictment reveals that Foley and Albin utilized several companies under their control to obtain prescriptions for the equipment. These orders were then billed to the government, resulting in payments totaling $9 million from from various government agencies and private insurers. What made this case particularly crazy was Aaron Foley's connection to law enforcement as the wife of Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office Captain Randy Foley. Aaron's arrest sent shockwaves through the community. Captain Foley, a highly respected figure in the Sheriff's Office, appeared in federal court on behalf of his wife during a bond hearing. The couple, who married in Las Vegas in 2003, also ran a consulting company together called Liberty Bell Consulting, Inc. The indictment suggests that they not only billed for medically unnecessary equipment, but also acted as brokers for the equipment, solicitating and receiving cash kickbacks in the process. If convicted on all charges, Foley and Albin could face a maximum sentence of 50 years behind bars for offenses including healthcare fraud, wire fraud, and violation of anti-kickback laws. The implications of this case extend beyond the individuals involved. Medicare, a taxpayer-funded program designed to provide affordable health care to retirees and disabled individuals has been exploited for personal gain. In Palm Beach County, where Captain Foley serves as head of the Behavioral Services Division, the arrest has raised questions about his knowledge of his wife's activities. While the sheriff's office maintained that Captain Foley wasn't implicated in the allegations, the situation has cast a shadow over his reputation. And the twins had control of a bunch of different companies, but still needed to scam? Sure, they got guaranteed to be these hugely successful companies or anything, but with the number of businesses they had and her husband's probably good salary, this seems like a really unnecessary risk. Do you think Captain Foley knew or was he in the dark? Let us know in the comment section. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay right here for our past release to find out how some of the worst criminals live with the cash they stole. Number one, no, no, I slang that. <clears throat> David Levy orchestrated a scam that saw him and his cohorts pocketing a jaw-dropping 500,000 pounds in charity donations over a decade. The elaborate scam involved setting up fake collections at supermarkets across England and Scotland using the logos and marketing materials of well-known charities like Children in Need and Mind. Levi's criminal group exploited people's goodwill, falsely promising that the proceeds would benefit these good causes. However, only a fraction of the funds ever reached the intended organizations, with the bulk of the money going into Levi's pockets. What makes this story even crazier is Levi's excuse when confronted by the authorities. In a recording played in court, Levi, when questioned about the stolen money, said he was working in the same field as uh, Deuce Bigelow male gigolo. In an audio clip, Levi's casual admission of working as a man of the night, a nightman if you will, left investigators amused. His attempt to attribute his income to this type of work raised eyebrows, especially given Levi's appearance. Moreover, it's amazing to learn that Levi's purported line of work as a nightman was actually legal in the UK. The fact that people can make money like that without legal repercussions actually makes his excuse plausible. But as the investigation unfolded, Levi's elaborate story began to unravel. Lancashire police launched an investigation after getting a tip from the BBC's Children in Charity. This ultimately led to Levy's arrest as well as the arrest of his accomplices. Raiding Levy's home and business brought in a ton of evidence, including phones, tablets, and charity items, ultimately sealing the fate of Levy and his associates. The sentencing at Preston Crown Court marked the culmination of the legal saga, with Levy and his co-conspirators conspirators facing the consequences of their actions. Levy was sent to prison for five years for his role in the scam. It's pretty low to pretend to be a children's charity, so while Levy's excuse is kind of funny, his crime wasn't. And let's not forget, it's pretty dumb to try and pull off such a far-fetched excuse, especially this guy. But now that he's doing some time, he'll be irresistible, as the ladies will see him as a dangerous bad boy type. Who are some of the scammers with the most ridiculous lifestyles? Let's find out and get started with... Number 4. Hush Puppy 
Nigerian social media influencer Ramon Abbas, known as Ray Hushpuppy to his 2 million Instagram followers, was accused of operating several international online scams involving money laundering. Abbas grew up in a poor neighborhood in Nigeria called Lagos. His mom worked at the local market and his father was a taxi driver. Abbas started selling shoes and clothing out of the back of his car in Nigeria for some extra money. Eventually, he became successful enough to open a few stores throughout his town. But everyone in town knew that Ray was really making his money online through cybercrime. Locally, he was called a Yahoo boy, or someone who makes their money through internet scamming. While he claimed to make his money through the local fashion industry, Ray was laundering hundreds of millions of dollars. In 2014, Ray left Nigeria for Kuala Lumpur, where his hush puppy persona really started to take off. A while later, he moved to Dubai, where he posted photos of himself donning designer clothing in luxury cars or private jets. Some of the items that made Abbas's Instagram page included a Bentley Bentega, Gucci t-shirts, and a Richard Mill watch. He never failed to include an inspirational quote about his success in his Instagram captions. Back in Nigeria, Ray's wealth turned him into a celebrity. Photos circulated of him with famous Nigerian musicians and politicians. However, Nigerian news outlets began to speculate that Ray was a Yahoo boy. In one scheme in January 2019, Ray and his co-conspirator laundered $15 million that North Korean hackers stole from a bank in Malta and funneled the money to banks in Romania and Bulgaria. In another ruse, Ray and a partner attempted to steal $100 million from a Premier League football club by intercepting payments with fake emails. Abbas admitted to defrauding someone in Qatar out of a $15 million loan that would have been used to build a school. Over a period of 18 months, Ray laundered over $300 million and authorities began to notice. The FBI had their eye on Abbas since 2019. When one of his co-conspirators got caught, Ray knew he was in hot water. Based on Nigerian news articles, text conversations between Ray and his co-conspirator, plus his flashy social media page, the FBI garnered enough evidence to make an arrest. The Dubai police caught up to Abbas in June 2020. Police barged into his apartment and placed him under arrest. He was held at a federal detention center for months. Still, that didn't stop people from wanting to watch Ray's life. In fact, it garnered him even more fame. He gained an additional 300,000 followers after his arrest. Two days before, he uploaded a photo of himself with a white Rolls Royce. In April 2021, Ray pleaded guilty to conspiracy to engage in money laundering. The following November, a federal judge in California sentenced him to more than 11 years in prison plus $1.7 million in restitution for his victims for money money laundering and internet fraud. It looks like this puppy was hushed for good. Number three, Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes made her fortune through a biotech startup called Theranos. The blood testing company claimed to use a special device that could detect diseases in blood samples faster than anyone else in the world. Investors and patients bought into Holmes' lies. It was later discovered that the devices did not actually work. Holmes has claimed that she truly believed in her mission and had scammed herself just as much as anyone. The prosecution countered that Holmes knowingly conducted business and raked in profits while knowing that her biotech company was a complete sham. Even during the trial, Holmes didn't cut corners on her life of luxury. Holmes lived with her partner, Billy Evans, a hospitality heir, living in the Green Gables in Silicon Valley. As one of the most expensive estates in the country, it's worth $135 million. The pair lived in a nine-bedroom home on a 74-acre property with four pools, a tennis court, flower and vegetable gardens, and reservoir. The estate was built in 1911 and is a well-known host venue for politicians, royalty, and Silicon Valley celebrities. But that wasn't their only property. Holmes and Evans continued to rent their luxury apartment in San Francisco for 5,000 bucks per month, even after Theranos shut down in 2018. The apartment is located on the famous Lombard Street. Holmes was set on buying a Siberian Husky. She flew first class across the country, was chauffeured to a top-of-the-line breeder, and purchased a nine-week-old puppy that she named Balto. During work, she and Balto were often picked up by a private driver, 
driver, sometimes with personal assistance and security guards in tow. Balto was allowed into the Theranos labs, which made scientists complain about potentially contaminated samples. There were frequent concerns over dog waste in a supposedly sterile facility. Vanity Fair reported that Holmes had two drivers, two security guards, and two assistants. She was driven everywhere and had an assistant on call 24-7. She also had a personal publicist who she paid $25,000 per month. But in the end, many of her employees just became dog walkers for Balto. Holmes frequently traveled via private jet. When the business started to face financial woes, she reluctantly agreed to downgrade to business class on commercial flights. The Theranos headquarters in Palo Alto cost $1 million per month in rental fees. When designing the facility, Holmes reportedly spent $100,000 on a single conference room table. One of the boardrooms had screens that descended from the ceiling. Holmes quickly had to sacrifice her bougie lifestyle after Theranos went bankrupt and she went on trial. Holmes was convicted in November of 2022 on four counts of criminal fraud and got 135 months in prison. Those prison linens are going to be a huge disappointment. Number two, Ruzha Ignatova. Ruzha Ignatova, known by some as the scammer of the century, gained her $4 billion in riches through a fake cryptocurrency called OneCoin, which she and her business partner claimed would put Bitcoin out of business. The Bulgarian businesswoman held infotainment events in which she showcased herself as a billionaire dripping in rare jewels and designer couture. And it didn't stop there. She threw birthday parties at the legendary Victoria and Albert Museum, complete with a performance from Tom Jones, exciting all the single ants that were in attendance. Ignatova also owned several properties in Sofia, Bulgaria, and Sozopol. She thought the scam would last forever. It didn't. Soon after her Ponzi scheme came into the spotlight in 2017, Ignatova vanished. She's been on the FBI's 10 most wanted list ever since. Ignatova owns a huge four-bedroom London penthouse on the Abbott's House apartment block in Kensington. Abbott's House Penthouse Limited is a well-known company with very little government oversight, which meant that Ignatova's name was kept out of public records and land registry deeds. The property boasts a private pool in the residence with a highly valued Andy Warhol painting she'd stuffed in a closet. Of all the things Ignatova claims to be, she does not claim to be an art connoisseur, but likely bought some art pieces in order to funnel her wealth into something tangible. A BBC reporter remembered meeting Ignatova in 2016 after she returned from a shopping trip. Her bodyguards lagged behind her with more than 20 shopping bags each. Each bag was full of designer items from brands like Jimmy Choo, Prada, and Calvin Klein. According to the BBC article, her apartment stored art worth nearly $600,000 from London's Halcyon Gallery. Some of the art featured included a print of Elizabeth Taylor, another Warhol called Red Lennon, and a print of Queen Bubblegum by Michael Mobius. Ignatova fled to her native Bulgaria and then to Dubai, where she lived on a private super yacht in the Mediterranean. The 145-foot-long super yacht can house 12 guests in six cabins, including including one master bedroom, one VIP, three double, and two twin rooms. There is also a gym, sun deck jacuzzi, and underwater observation post on board the ship. In addition to her London penthouse and a multi-million dollar private residence in Dubai, she invested two and a half million dollars on the coast of Bulgaria in a town called Sozopal. Apparently, her new home includes a small private beach, a vineyard, a children's playground, and a large swimming pool. This is Ignatova's summer home. She also bought a three-story building next door to serve as her guest house. Police warned that Ignatova likely got plastic surgery to change her appearance and evade capture. But in January 2023, Ignatova unexpectedly came out of the woodwork to list her London property for sale. She put it up for sale with an asking price of $15.5 million, which she later reduced to $13.6 million. Even though Ignatova bought the property under a company name, a new law required her to come out of hiding and be named in full as the beneficiary of the company. The listing suggests that Ignatova is still alive, even though her whereabouts are unknown. It makes it easier for authorities to freeze her assets and lure her out of hiding, so her victims can get some of the restitution they deserve. The U.S. government has already charged Ignatova with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money fraud, conspiracy to commit securities fraud, and securities fraud. Ignatova is currently one of only 11 women to ever make the FBI's 10 most wanted list. The FBI is offering a $100,000 reward to anyone who can provide intel on Ignatova's location that may lead to her arrest. It's speculated that she probably traveled with a German passport to Athens, to the UAE, Germany, Russia, or even back to her native Bulgaria. Ignatova's business partner, Sebastian
Christian Greenwood wasn't as successful in his escape. In July 2018, he was arrested in Koh Samui, Thailand. Ignatova's brother, Constantine, took over business operations but was arrested in March 2019. At some point, spending your life evading the law is a prison in itself. Number 1. Bill Omar Carrasquillo On YouTube, Bill Omar Carrasquillo called himself Omi in a Hellcat, a business mogul who flaunted his wealth with diamond jewelry and luxury cars. He also ran his own clothing line and restaurant. Carrasquillo also showed off his luxury life on YouTube videos that garnered more than 1 million views each. The South Jersey YouTube personality made his money by stealing content from cable providers and selling it for a lower price online. With more than 800,000 YouTube subscribers, he had a robust clientele. From 2016 to 2019, Carrasquillo and his two associates opened fraudulent accounts with Comcast, DirecTV, and Verizon Fios and employed Chinese encoders to copyright the content and sell it to users via illegal streaming services for $15 per month. But it didn't last long. He was indicted for running a piracy scheme that earned him and his two business partners more than $30 million. Carrasquillo dropped out of school in 11th grade and was arrested for selling the good old stereotypical illegal substances people do for fun. By 2012, he was starting to get his life together and started selling DVDs and then reselling Amazon merchandise. He also created an app called Gears TV. After a year, Carrasquillo was a millionaire. Carrasquillo had more than a dozen luxury cars, including a Mercedes-Benz, Bentley, and a McLaren. He also had several properties nearby his native Philadelphia, including a mansion once owned by Phillies player Jimmy Rollins. Carrasquillo initially made maintained his innocence and documented his struggle against the federal government on YouTube since May 2019. In one video called The FBI is Back, Carrasquillo videoed himself adorned in a diamond encrusted pendant with his brand name on it and told his subscribers how the FBI seized more than 30 of his cars and millions of dollars from his bank account. Carrasquillo warned his subscribers that he could be indicted on charges including money laundering. He confessed to feeling kind of depressed about it. Even though much of his equipment was seized by the FBI, Carrasquillo said that he was running a legitimate business on the grounds that he paid for his cable boxes and streaming services. But that wasn't going to fly. Eventually, Carrasquillo admitted his involvement in the scam on a video he uploaded to his YouTube channel. He said a behind-the-scenes clip from Disney's Pixar encouraged him to admit his guilt because it showed some of the hard work that goes into making a film. It reminded him of the frustration he felt when people started knocking off his reloaded clothing brand. In another video, Carrasquillo pleaded with the government to not put him in jail. He promised that he wasn't a threat to society and would pay back however many millions of dollars he owed. He posted bail the same day he was arrested and promptly uploaded a video thanking his friends and fans for their support. Carrasquillo ultimately pleaded guilty to several charges including copyright infractions, wire fraud, money laundering, and tax evasion. Police seized a bank account with more than $5.2 million in addition to several cars including a 2018 Mercedes-Benz with $80,000 cash inside and a 2020 Bentley Continental with more than $20,000 cash inside. The indictment states that Carrasquillo and his associates must forfeit nearly $35 million in assets, including more than 50 cars and motorcycles, and several of his properties in Philadelphia. If convicted, Carrasquillo faces up to 514 years in prison. The case is ongoing as of February 2023, but it doesn't look good. Big Cable always gets their man. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you would rather have, free clothing for life or free food for life.